How do we turn day into night by using the white balance on our camera? Here we have our subject looking out of a window at night. We fade to blue hour, to sunrise, through to morning. Initially, we want to demonstrate a morning sunlight look. So we use lights to represent the sky and the sun. Our sun was a light panel's Gemini LED panel just outside and above the window, backlighting our subject. You can see that this light is pretty low in relation to the sky, making for a more accurate representation of where our sun would be coming from at this time of day. Our second light panel's LED panel was bouncing from a large sheet of muslin material opposite the window, making for a much softer light than our direct sunlight panel. This could either be representing the sky around the sun, or alternatively, something out of frame that the sun's light is bouncing from. Both lights were set to 3600 Kelvin approximating the Kelvin temperature of real sunlight at the time of day we wanted to replicate. As our light panel LEDs have a bicolour function, we're able to choose a whole range of colour temperatures. This allows us to choose more precise temperatures for our light sources, allowing us to light for more specific lighting scenarios, as is the case for our morning sun at 3600 Kelvin. Instead of white balancing our camera to 3600 Kelvin, which would match our lights, neutralise our image, and make it appear more like midday, we warmed up our camera's white balance to 4600 Kelvin. This looks much more realistic and representative of the time of day we want to show in the image. It's not quite sunrise, it's not quite late morning, so we still have a little warmth from our sun. So we've got a harder light for our sun, and a softer light for our sky, or indirect bounce light. We positioned our sun in the appropriate place to replicate the time of day that we want to show. We've set the colour temperature of our lights to back this up, and pushed our white balance in camera to better convey the warmth at this time of day. All of these elements combined form a lighting scenario our brain can recognise, even without an obvious motivation for the light in our shot. Since we're using the same colour temperature for each light, as in our previous video, we can alter our camera's white balance to make our image cooler or warmer, without unbalancing the two sources that are lighting the scene. But we can't always just push our colour temperature around without a reason. It needs to make sense. And trying to use colour temperature on its own to create, for example, the feeling of moonlight. It doesn't look right. Moonlight doesn't look like this. Or does it? Sunlight and moonlight produce a more similar quality of light than you'd expect. The sun is a direct source of light like a bare lighting unit with no softbox or modifier. The moon is an indirect source of light, bouncing light from the sun, like a reflector. Since bounced light produces a softer quality of light, moonlight should be softer than the sun. But this isn't quite correct. Softness and hardness of light is more to do with the size of a light source relative to the object or area that it's illuminating. The smaller the light source, the less the light can see around objects, creating hard shadows with sharper edges. The larger the light source, the more the light can see around objects, creating soft shadows with a gentle fall off from light to shadow. So regardless of the fact that the moon is a reflector, both moon and sun are very far away from us meaning the size of these light sources, relative to us on Earth, are pretty small. This means that they both produce 
hard light. When sunlight hits the Earth's atmosphere, blue light is scattered, making the sky appear blue and spreading more light. In this photograph, we can see where the sunlight is being blocked by objects in the scene, creating shadows. If we take a look at some of these shadows, we can see that they're a cooler colour temperature than where our sun is shining, meaning our blue sky is filling these shadows in at a lower exposure than our sun. Moonlight is much dimmer than sunlight, and as such, our eyes can't pick up the blue light scattered around the Earth's atmosphere anywhere near as well as we can with the sun. If we shoot a long exposure photograph at night, we can see this effect, and in doing this, we can see how similar the quality of sunlight and moonlight actually are. But to our own eyes, moonlight is simply a single point source of light, with no light around it. This means we likely won't see details in any shadows cast by the moon at night, it's just too dark for our eyes to pick up. So how can we use this information we just learned to inform an image? Well, we already have our sunlit scene, and we know moonlight is very similar to sunlight, it's just much harder to see into the shadows due to it being darker overall. So let's turn down our exposure, and pull our shadows down a little further whilst adding a touch of contrast to emphasise this. But this still kind of looks like sunlight. This brings us right back to colour temperature. Moonlight is actually rated around 4000 Kelvin on the Kelvin scale, but when it's darker, our eyes become much more sensitive to blue light, so we perceive moonlight as much bluer. So, along with our exposure changes, let's cool down our camera's white balance. Sunlight to moonlight. Our lights have gone from representing the sun to representing the moon. The relationship between exposure and colour temperature has allowed us to create two different lighting scenarios whilst still sharing the same lighting setup, qualities and positioning. If we turn off our moonlight, raise our exposure a little, our soft bounce light is now acting as blue hour sky. It looks like very early morning, and the sun hasn't quite reached the horizon, meaning the brightest section of sky would be on the horizon, which is roughly where our bounce light is positioned. If we push our white balance higher, beyond our light source's 3600 Kelvin measurement, to introduce more warmth into the scene, and increase our exposure a little more. We have a representation of sunrise. Since we have no hard sunlight in the scene, it's easy to imagine our sun is just approaching the horizon, making for a warmer, brighter light on our scene. And finally, we turn our third light back on, introducing our sunlight which has now risen, and is lighting the scene. Lowering our white balance slightly, to better replicate the slightly cooler temperature of the time of day we want to represent. Understanding the relationship between quality, positioning, and exposure levels of the lighting you're recreating in your shot can help you to use colour temperature and white balance in ways that can creatively and realistically represent lighting situations we see in real life, helping to convey different moods, feelings, or even just the time of day. You can watch the entire five-part series now with no wait, featuring an exclusive section not available on YouTube by downloading the whole 46-minute mini core from robelliscinematography.com forward slash downloads for just £15. You can also stream the whole tutorial by becoming a patron. In part 3, 
We'll look at how to measure and assess the color temperature in your scene, allowing you to gain more control over the temperature of your own lighting, helping to make your images much more believable. This part is exclusive to the full downloadable version of the Lighting with Color mini course. Next up on YouTube, in part four, we'll be looking at mixing different color temperatures together, more obviously, but also more subtly. The Lighting with Color series is color graded using Dehancer. Use my code Rob Ellis to get 10% off. Support my channel on Patreon and get extra lighting and shoot breakdowns, along with early, ad-free YouTube videos. I use music from AudioSocket in my videos. Click my referral link in the video description and use the code Rob Ellis when you sign up for a free month of the best and most diverse range of stock music available. Use my code Rob Ellis over at Zyro to get up to 72% off your website or storefront with three extra months free, along with a custom domain for a year. I use Artgrid for stock footage. Get an extra two months free when you sign up using the link in the video description.